Hey guys, I'm Shelly and I'm Heidi and we're from Gajinpot. Today we're going to be talking about how to find your new full-time job in Japan. From what kind of visa do you need to your Japanese fluency level, we'll cover everything you need to know before you start your job hunt. Basic requirements. Visas. When it comes to visa types in Japan, it can be pretty confusing. So we've tried to simplify it down into three main categories, blue, red, and yellow. Let's break them down. The unrestricted work visa types are a visa that offers more freedom. We're talking no work hour or job type restrictions. These are less about your job and more about the unique reason that you're in Japan. So if you don't have any direct family or personal ties in Japan, you'll most likely need a specific job visa instead. The specific job visas vary, but they're all about the work you do here in Japan. Most foreigners here fall into this category. For example, English teachers would get the instructor visa, but if you want to work in a different industry, you'll need a visa that matches that. General visas are mainly for education or cultural activities. Just remember, these have work limitations. So while you can get a part-time job while studying, for full-time work, you'll eventually need a visa type shown here in blue or red. There's also the working holiday visa, which lets you try different jobs in Japan for a limited time. But unfortunately, it's only available for specific countries. For more details on visas, check out our Japan 101 article linked in the video description. Educational background. A bachelor's degree is often crucial to qualify for one of the specific job visas. Over 10 years of experience might work, but for most common jobs like English teaching, a bachelor's degree is often a must. If you have a high school diploma, you can apply for a technical school in Japan in an industry that you'd like to work in. However, keep in mind that you will need to pass a JLPT N2 or an equivalent certification before enrolling. Gaijinpot study can also help you find a vocational school that fits your needs. JLPT level. Generally, your Japanese fluency will play a big role in the kinds of jobs to be qualified to apply for. For people who pass the JLPT N1 and N2, employers will assume that you can communicate in a Japanese business setting with little to no trouble. You should be able to get through the traditional interview process that other Japanese job hunting candidates experience. JLPT N3 passers and below may find it more challenging to enter traditional Japanese companies or work in a predominantly Japanese-speaking environment. If you'd like to increase your chances of getting hired, you'll have to study more. Attending a language school such as the ones listed on Gaijinpot study are a great way to improve your skills while in Japan. Job experience. Your job experience, if any, prior to job hunting in Japan, along with your Japanese fluency, can be a huge advantage as you enter the job market. If you have prior job experience, it would benefit you to look for positions you already specialize in. For new graduates, those who enrolled in technical courses like IT may have an easier time finding companies who will hire them regardless of the JLPT level, as the demand for those fields are higher. Okay, now that we've covered the basics, let's find you a job in Japan. Whether you're job hunting from your home country or in Japan, there are a few ways to find your new Japanese job. The overall application process in Japan is somewhat straightforward. There are cultural differences, but you can expect four main steps in finding your new job. Applying, screening, interviewing, and then officially taking the job. First, let's look at some ways to find your job if you're already here in Japan. Job hunting in Japan. Direct hire. If there is a certain company you'd like to work for, you may find that some of these companies have a direct hiring process. Many companies, especially larger ones, have dedicated sections on their websites for job listings and applications. You can also explore their social media presence or reach out to affiliated universities and college career centers. You'll need to do some research into the company in advance. New graduate recruitment. Recruitment for new university graduates in Japan follows a structured process with a specific job search schedule in the spring. Being one of the most traditional ways to find a job in Japan, there is a lot to prepare in advance. Expect to provide structured resumes and to attend extensive interviews. Job fair. If you're looking for an interactive way to find your new job, a job fair in Japan is the best place to meet your potential future employees in Japan. There, you can speak to various companies and ask questions before committing to an interview. Interning. Whether you're still a student at university or looking to get some insight to your preferred industry, interning can be the first step before full-time employment. If you're already in Japan and looking to dip your toes in, consider interning as a gateway to your dream job. That's actually how I got my job. Recruitment agency. 
Why not let someone else find your new job for you? But you will also need to be prepared. Applying to a recruitment agency in Japan typically involves a structured and often formal process. You'll need to submit a comprehensive resume in a specific Japanese style format. Many recruitment agencies will conduct interviews and assessments to evaluate your skills and qualifications. They may offer guidance on crafting an effective resume, but ultimately it's up to you to put your best foot forward. Finding a job while overseas. Don't let being overseas put a stop to your dream of working in Japan. There are a variety of ways to find a job in Japan from home. English job websites. There are several English job search websites that cater to foreigners in Japan and overseas. These websites list a variety of positions from teaching English to roles in IT, finance and more. You can browse these websites, find positions that match your qualifications and apply directly online. The sites may also provide information about visa sponsorships, which is crucial for foreigners wishing to work in Japan. Some English job search websites in Japan include Gaijinpot Jobs. That's us, so special mention. As well as these sites that vary in job field and application process. Japanese job websites. If you're proficient in Japanese, you have the opportunity to apply directly through Japanese job sites. While many listings on these platforms may prefer applicants who are already in Japan, some companies are open to international candidates. If this sounds like you, here are some Japanese job sites for you to explore. Intercompany transfers. If you already work for a multinational corporation, consider relocating to work at their Japanese branch. Intercompany transfers often make obtaining a work visa much easier. Government websites. In Japan, there are government-affiliated job search websites. Here are four websites to check out. Hello Work, the Japan External Trade Organization. For those interested in the music industry, the Japanese Society for Rights of Authors, Composers, and Publishers offers job listings in this field. The Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry focuses on roles related to economics, trade, and industry within Japan. Niche Skills Japan often has demand for professionals with niche skills. These skills can vary from expertise in highly specialized industries like robotics, AI or animation to proficiency in less common languages such as Arabic or Russian. Many companies want these unique abilities to gain a competitive edge. If you possess expertise in a specialized field, your chances of finding a rewarding job in Japan may be significantly higher. Let's go over some frequently asked questions and who better to ask than our experienced Gaijin Pot staff. Let's go! What are salaries in Japan like? So the average starting salary for a new graduate in Japan is about 210,000 yen per month. Um, although, do keep in mind that certain jobs, uh, like maybe a back-end engineer for example, that could have a lower salary than you might be used to, uh, say compared to a Western country. So if you want to look at salaries, it would be a good idea to compare job listings uh, from Western countries and also job listings in Japan. So when thinking about salary, do keep in mind that big companies or also jobs with commission may pay more. And also, even though the starting salary may feel a bit low if you compare it to other countries, many people uh, choose to live in Japan because of the social benefits. So that would be things like healthcare, really good public transportation, and also just it's a very safe and nice place to live. How do you get sponsored for a work visa? Getting sponsored for a work visa is pretty tough. It's probably the first challenge in um, being able to come and work in Japan. So one way to do that is to focus on the jobs that are accepting people from overseas. That's something that is advertised on Gaijin Pot, so you can find the employers that are kind of there prepared to help you to come to Japan, to obtain the visa. They can help walk you through that whole process. There's different types of work visas, so some require that you have a high level of Japanese or sometimes a decade of work experience in the role that you're applying for. But generally, the most important kind of qualification for uh, a very popular type of work visa called the Humanities Visa is a four-year a bachelor's degree. It is possible to join almost any company. Uh, once you have the job offer, they will issue something called the Certificate of Eligibility, which sometimes is referred to as the COE. And that is what allows you to take it to an embassy where you'll be able to apply for the work visa. Should I start my job hunt overseas or go to Japan first? So most companies when they're hiring foreigners, they'll generally prefer it if you are already in Japan. 
uh, because hiring people from overseas is a lot of extra work for sponsoring their visa. So this is also the reason why a lot of uh, foreigners will start off as English teachers in Japan because that's a good gateway job. And then once you're here, you can then uh, establish yourself and look for a different job if you so desire. So another option is to study at a language school or a university. And what that's gonna allow you to do is you can also improve your Japanese or your skills while actually being here in Japan and looking at uh, the job market. And for example, if you're especially interested in language school, we actually have our Guide Japan Study service where we can help you um, find the right school for your needs. And also we can help you out with the full visa process. So recommend. What should I do to transition away from my English teaching job? Okay, so if you want to transition out of English teaching, you're going to need three things. A new skill set, fluent Japanese skills, and a good understanding of how things work around here. Now, how much of each of those things you need depends on what you're transitioning into, but the more you have of all three, the better. You're especially going to want to have fluent Japanese skills because once you get hired, the company that's hiring you is going to give you the on-the-job training that you'll need to get you up to speed. What should I do to prepare for a job while still in school? So to improve your chances of finding a job after you graduate, there's a few things you should do. Um, the first most important thing, uh, obviously, is just to always be improving your Japanese. Uh, next, you should be researching what the visa requirements uh, are going to be for a job because you don't want to be caught off guard by that. And then the last thing is, while you're still in school, make sure to make use of everything that's at the school. So for example, you could join a club, which could help you maybe gain skills or also just network with people who could help you find a job in the future. And also many schools will have relationships with different companies and you could maybe use that to get something like an internship. A work resume is different in Japan. Japan kind of has a unique history when it comes to the application for jobs or the, the CV or the resume. There is a document called the Rideki Show, which is a universal format document. And this is still relatively common. You can go to the supermarket and purchase pre-printed uh, Rideki Show. Every employer is kind of expecting the same sort of information, which would include like your name, your birthday, photograph of you. So one benefit to that is that you can create a bunch of these to give out to different companies and it's always going to be the same information that you're handing out. But uh, what's unique about it is that in Japan, handwriting is something that is seen as a window into that person's personality. So in the past, you would have to handwrite 20 applications to be submitting to these different companies, which can be really tiring and make your hand cramp. There's also kind of a unique section called the Jiko PR or your self PR. And this is where you can kind of express yourself a little bit more, talk about what you're interested in, what's unique about you, and maybe why the employer should consider you for the position. There's also the secondary document called the Shokumu Keideki Show. And this is where you can go into more detail to fill in the experiences of your personal timeline. So when you were in school, what did you study? When you took a new job, what sort of duties did you perform? Why did you leave that company? You can kind of give more definition and detail about what you were doing in this longer document. Most Japanese companies are becoming very modern in terms of accepting applications online. So of course, they're gonna accept your application uh, typed and not necessarily handwritten. Plus, there's a lot of uh, online websites where you can then submit your application for the job or even through their own website. Uh, on Gaijinpot, most of the employers are expecting you to apply for the job in English. So they're not expecting our Rideki Show or any of these other things. So it can be a plus to be able to show your aptitude for Japan or your interest in Japan. But unless your Japanese is perfect, it's not something that you're really going to need to uh, worry about too much. What is the Japanese work culture like? Okay, so usually from my experience and my friends and people that I know, Japan's companies tend to value teamwork and people are very hardworking with their jobs. They respect their bosses and like older generations. Usually you're expected to work some overtime and some people even work on Saturdays. But um, these days it's changing and a lot of foreigner friendly companies or newer companies, they have um, more flexible hours and like um, better benefit packages. So it would be good to look for what fits you most. What's a very traditional Japanese company like? 
そうですねその社歴が長い会社とか特に大企業とかあとは家族経営の会社さんが典型的な日本の会社としてあの持っている特徴としてはすごく上下関係が厳しかったりですとかあとはルールが多いとかっていうところが挙げられるかなと思います特にその典型的な日本企業さんの中ではあまりこうワークライフバランスを重視した働き方っていうのは難しいことは多いかなと思うので特にその入ってすぐとかっていうのはなかなか大変な環境になるんじゃないかなと思います。Does your career change based on how long you stay in Japan? Yeah, well, it depends on a couple of factors. If you take the trouble to learn Japanese and learn about the culture first, it will improve your chances of changing your career and getting a better job the longer you stay in Japan. However, having said that, once you do get a little bit older, it does become more difficult to change jobs because you might have to settle for a Lower salary than what you're used to. This is because companies are loath to hire older people because they'll have to pay more, unless, of course, you're recruited to be like a CEO or a general manager. But in general, if you are older and you do want to change jobs, you'll probably have to settle for a lower salary. And of course, when you've been in your job for a long time, you may not want to change. After all, you're in your comfort zone, and as you do get older, you like your job to be. Agreeable, something that you're familiar with and something that you know. So it very much depends on what career path you want. So when you do come to Japan at the beginning, it's always helpful to know Japanese, the culture, but also to learn new skills along the way so that it gives you more options because after 50 or even 60, you may want to try a completely different profession from the one that you started out with. We hope you found this video helpful. Good luck on your job hunt, and if you have any more questions, leave them down below. See you in Japan! Bye!